Oh, man. Much like uh, unsweetened almond tea. Almond milk, I mean. the When you grab the, the, the almond by the teat and just milk it, um, mm-hmm. don't add any sweetener to it. That's like this show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pokemon After Dark Rye. We're that tangy, sweet, raw drink of nature that you've been craving. Uh, my name is Brett, as always. Uh, not joining me today is Gracie. She had an engagement she needed to attend. Very serious indeed. She is being, um, uh, sh- she's under consideration for a film role uh, for the documentary about her own life where she would play herself. However, she is going up against Nicole Kidman. But, you know, since they're kind of identical, I give her a 50 50 shot of whether or not she actually gets it. But, Joining me today, I'm very happy to say, is one Ryan, one Chris from Gotta Rank Em All and Friendly Fire. Guys, welcome. Thank you for having us on uh, short notice. We're glad to be here. It's always uh, fun. Uh, totally not. Totally wasn't short notice. It was totally planned. I threw this into the ether. I sent a prayer to God and, you know, we can't argue against his plan, his will. And you sent Gastly's after us, really. Uh, I mean, that's yeah. They let's be real. I my God is not the one y'all were thinking of when I said that. Um, <laughs> they drug you through the upside down, aka the negative zone, or wherever the fuck Giratina's from, and brought you to me, kicking and screaming all the way. There's a literal, literal satanic bug flying around my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. Uh, Ryan, what's new with you? What What have you been into since last we've heard you on the show? Oh my god! Uh, playing games a lot of the time. Played some non po not exactly Pokemon, but Creature Collector. Played some Temtem. Oh, that's uh, just blaspheme! Blaspheme! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Please tell us. <laughs> I have not played Temtems, although I've heard plenty about it. How how is that stack up to like the Creature Collection uh, subgenre? It's a good time. I, the, they're doing a few things differently. Stamina's instead of PP. Uh, most. Be- it's just about every battle is a double battle, which is uh, more interesting for combat. You know, there's more synergistic stuff you can do between your Thames. Uh, I think the story is a little bit more engaging, but uh, I think Pokemon still has better designs overall on their creatures. Yeah, also, I also played all the way through Tem Tem. The story is more engaging, but it's still not good. So, well, I mean... I could not be there, and it's fine. I'll say what I, from what I've seen of the game, like, it's just the what the Temtems themselves like this the designs don't really seem to pop out at me they don't seem to grab me quite as much as a pokemon granted mm. there are plenty of pokemon that i think are absolutely terrible spoiler alert for later in the show but um there are still plenty that i love i mean come on lechonk blew up the internet and i don't think a single Temtem to me was like oh my god that could be a really cool pokemon if we're like that's what i expected from temtem i expected some of them to be like oh that would be a really cool pokemon if it were in pokemon but none of them really did that for me yeah i i I liked my team that i ended up with but i struggle to remember any of their names or what half of them look like so that's not a great sign (laughs) i I struggled with the rock paper scissors because the it's not this quite the same as pokemon with fire water earth earth excuse me earth there's the earth is the 19th uh type that they're going to introduce in scarlet and violet just you wait they decided that rock and ground isn't enough and they needed a third one (laughs) um and then they'll summon captain fucking planet uh yeah wow and you guys uh do a show called gotta rank them all where you are some for some reason have put it upon yourselves to rank every pokemon in existence uh Mm -hmm. you poor souls um at least you have plenty of although to be fair we do do a pokemon every episode so we we're kind of in a similar boat where we'll never be finished we'll never be finished (laughs) (laughs) it's a great Uh, idea for content (laughs) yeah uh that's basically the premise of this show why it started um guys how old this is serious serious podcast interview in question time hmm. how old do you think you both will be uh by the time you finished ranking all of them um like 
all of them that we know of or when Game Freak ceases making Pokemon? <laughs> no, I mean, OK, let me rephrase that. When you guys get caught up. Oh, uh, 30, which is how old I am now, because we yeah, actually only have like 100 left. Plus no, whatever they add in the new gen. I mean, you think so, but they haven't said how many's in the new gen, have they? No, but I mean, how often is it much more than another 150? Right. But you guys aren't taking into account how you guys are going to slow down and do like two per episode. <laughs> <laughs> you got to adjust so you can keep the content train flowing. Um, no, well, then it just it, it, uh, once we've put them all into a list, it just becomes a show about uh, arguing over the list with new guests every week. <laughs> and that's I, endless because I, I want to see a version of your show where just like um, battle royale style uh, where you have like the final list or whatever. And then somehow we turn this into like a tournament for the ultimate mm. like top 10 spot. Once you get the, you know, the solid ranking, of course, that kind of screws over the ones already in the top 10 spot, but maybe they get buys or something. Is that a thing? Is that something we can do? This is me pitching, just pitching podcast ideas to you guys now. You guys, are <laughs> you guys are so much better at it than I am. So, like, we finish this list, and that's round one. Round two fight is re is uh, 99 random numbers from the list yeah. dropping in and slowly eliminating each other till we have... I think I think there needs to be a lo loser's bracket, right? For, like, the, mm. the last 100. I think that's fair. I think mm -hmm. that's just the last 100 right now. I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that that would have been an interesting way to do the whole show, though, actually, is doing like a, a bracket and then a loser's I, bracket and winner's bracket until you get the whole list because you can technically parse it that way. It might have taken even longer, though. I oh, need to bro. go back. I need to go back in our own history because I know we did do a tournament style thing that I can't remember how or why I even did it. Um, and I think I did promise the listener that we would do more of it. <laughs> we have like 30 <laughs> segments. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Who can keep track of it all? Um, by the way, thank you so much to our patrons. If you want to be a patron, check us out at patreon.com slash pod dog. Cisco M, Mom, Mine, Steve S, and Ken P. I love you, and I'm in love with all of you. Um, how I, I mentioned it to you guys before we started recording, but we're going to talk a little bit of Scarlet and Violet today. Mm -hmm. um, what do you guys, how do you guys feel about the sandwich mechanic? This is probably far and above the thing I might be most excited for. <laughs> That's, I, I don't know about that, but I, I think it's fun that they, not only do they have like a, you know, it seems like a pretty simple cooking mechanic in terms of like, you make a sandwich and it makes it where you can catch a certain type of Pokemon more easily or whatever. But the fact that they actually have physics in it and you can really make that sandwich ugly as hell that <laughs> I like. Ryan? Yeah, the physics is where I, it looks more interesting than any of the previous cooking mini games they have where I'll just spin at the right speed, make sure this curry doesn't stick. Uh, I feel more excited to build a sandwich because it actually looks like you have a little more control over putting a sandwich together. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I, I think I might actually be the most curious about what the buffs are and if they will actually be something I try to engage with a little bit more because I didn't really care all that much in previous games if the food was amazing and gave me the best buffs or if it just healed up a little bit. Yeah, I, I thought curry was fun for a hot minute and then I just kind of got... I, I didn't care about the decks. Like, mm. I like the idea in... The execution I thought was fine. It just didn't catch on for me for whatever reason. I'm hoping that sandwich making and picnics will be less cumbersome so that I can just get right into them. The quicker and faster that I can get into the little mini game, and the faster the mini game is, the more likely I'm going to do it more often. If, yeah. I, if it requires me to wait through a 30 second loading screen, I'm going to do it three times <laughs> maybe <laughs> like yeah. i just the more you make me wait the more i'm just not gonna do it um but i am excited for it it looks fun and sandwiches are infinitely more interesting than curry although not to not curry curry is delicious in real life um i'm just kind of really hungry right now <laughs> and the more we talk about this the hungrier i get um uh, 
I wonder how much that's going to be tied in with the co-op. Like, are we going to be able to make each other sandwiches? I, I would hope so, because you could cook curry with somebody. It was just kind of a pain in the ass to get together in the overworld and mm-hmm. get into a camp and do it. So much so that I didn't do it. It was just too much of a hassle to bother. Um, so I'm hoping they really streamline uh, everything that they kind of like started to build on in in Galar there, like in, in terms of like their online play. I'm really hoping they smooth it out. I don't know what it was like in Arceus because I didn't play that one. But was there even any multiplayer in Arceus? Classic we found each other's backpacks online. OK, like, like, so, yeah. Yeah, that was so no actual like connecting, connecting. No, no three handsome, sexy podcast dudes just slapping their meat together into a big old subway sandwich of, of awesomeness. Unfortunately, Slathered not. Slathered with that mayo. A little um, bit. Little it's leaking bit. out the tip. Do you think that this is going to result in a huge subway explosion? Like, buy a stock now. Buy the stock now. Because. <laughs> Because in 10 years, when those kids that are playing this game that are too young to, like, really know any better, they're going to get really nostalgic for this sandwich mini game and start, you know, start going to Subway. I, I, you know there's going to be a McDonald's tie-in, and it's going to be a total freaking waste. They should do Subway. <laughs> and not even give, like, Pokemon toys out for their Happy Meals or whatever the fuck Subway has. Is They should just give out, like, little miniature Pokemon sandwiches. <laughs> Which Pokemon would be the best sandwich meat? Oh my gosh, I love you, Ryan. This is <laughs> why I have you here. Man, we could go. Lechonk. It's going to be Lechonk, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, Pig Knight's probably too well done. Mm. Although that could be a nice, like, spicy salami ham. S- spicy ham. Yeah, mm. you're very mm-hmm. much right. Combuskin, penis bird. Um, already cooking itself. It's a nice tendy. Mm. I like me a spicy chicken sandwich. That's my usually my go-to. God, I love a good burger, though. Like, I mean, is there anything more delicious than a perfectly cooked, savory mill tank on a on a sesame seed bun? I don't mm. think so. Oh man, maybe mm. not. Mm. Slowpoke tails. Oh, I mean, yeah. they got to be delicious if they're eating them in the game. What, Million dollars. What is a slowpoke? Is my question. Hmm, that's a good question. I, f- I feel like they're maybe amphibious in some way. They, they definitely seem- are. Yeah. They're like baby okay. hippos, kind of, but yeah. they're not hippos. They're not quite hippos. They're not quite salamanders. That is a good question. I've never thought about what a slowpoke is based off of. Uh, it's got to be something. That's a. Right. I think you hit it on that. I think it's a cross between a hippo and a salamander, and they kind of just did half and half. Mm. Yeah. If it's a, I don't know what hippo tastes like, but I bet it's delicious. They're very fatty and muscly, like probably the perfect ratio. You know, they do a lot of swimming and cardio. Um, they're kind of salamander. The tail grows back, right? Cow like. What do you think a whale tastes like? Like whale meat, not whale blubber. You don't want the fat. That's gross. It's probably really tough, right? You maybe. I mean, they're always swimming, right? So they're burning constantly, burning cow. I imagine, like, if you got a nice, nice, uh, what do you call it? Shoulder blade, like a shoulder, like a pectoral mm. fin shoulder blade. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that would be good. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> this is this 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 shows off the rails. <laughs> uh, there, as of this recording, I'm sure they'll release something tomorrow that'll piss me off, but. Uh, as of this recording, the latest trailer for Scarlet and Violet showcased the, the new gym leader, Iono mm-hmm. or Iono. I, uh, I, you know, I was thinking Ion because it's electric, electric type gym leader, right. right? I would normally agree, except I, the letter I in Japan is pronounced E, if I'm not mistaken. We're in Spain, aren't we? Right? Paldea is Spain. That's fair. Wasn't she speak? Was she speaking? Japanese in the trailer? I figured that was just because it's Game Freak making it. I thought, because she's supposed to be like this, like, hot streamer girl. Hot Twitch streamer girl. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the character. Yeah, definitely a... a, a, She's a VTuber? um, Yeah. If she's a VTuber, what do you think she really looks like underneath the... Right. uh, Oh, well, Yeah. yeah, you know. I actually um, was playing a game and like their screen name was a was a was a 
TTV and I went to it and it was a VTuber and I'd never seen one before. And I was just mesmerized that like <laughs> the voice matched the body. I'm like, this is what I should have done. Cause then you won't <laughs> even have to see my face. Uh, and it, it was a furry, but anyway, besides the point, um, Iona or Iona or whoever she is, she's the electric type gym leader in Paldea. Uh, what do you guys think of her design? I think it's just okay. I think it's fine. Uh, I think as long as uh, she keeps her mouth closed and I don't have to see the spiky teeth, I'm okay. Chris? Yes? What do you think of Iona? I mean, I, oh. I, I, Iona. Uh, she's fine. Yeah, I mean, the spiky ah. teeth I'm kind of okay with. Um, she's Chris, annoying. Chris she's, said that whole she's trailer annoys me. Fine. She's fine. She's a fine little 10 year old girl. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh God. We're going to. Um, <laughs> ooh, might, might have to cut that out <laughs> uh, yeah I, I mean she's annoying in the trailer but like she's supposed to be but you know in the games she won't there won't be any voice acting so it, she probably won't and sure the I, sharp I still... teeth are yeah I'm also on like the like why I don't, I don't she file them maybe yeah like how, yeah, how like it seems like they're really just trying to make a Splatoon character and Splatoon characters are like stylish, but they're also really annoying. Like that, nobody that, listens to that podcast at the beginning when they boot up Splatoon three. They tell them to shut up. That is fair. Um, her Pokemon that they also showcased was a Temtem named Belly Bolt because it was <laughs> completely unremarkable in any way. It looked like a fan made. It looked like a fan made Pokemon, but not a well made fan made Pokemon. It looked like a kid won a contest and made this thing. Belly Bolt is an electric frog, just electric type, no water. At least electric water would have made him somewhat interesting. Um, what do you guys think of Belly Bolt? I clearly, I'm not a fan. Uh, I like the fake eyes, um, but that's about it that I like in that design. Like the eyes on the side that are not actually its eyes. Yeah. Now that you say Tem Tem, you're right. It does look rather Tem Tem ish. <laughs> Um, I think it's cute enough, though. I think as a gym leader's, like, signature new Pokemon for the gen, though, a big letdown. Yeah, that's... I had to re-look up Bella Bolt. Holy, those are fake eyes? Yeah, the two little yellow things in the middle are its eyes. What? Why would they do this? <laughs> it's... It's a monster. I hate it. Uh, <laughs> so I, I get it could have been so clever because they're going for like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with what glass frogs are, but they're a frog whose skin is basically translucent, like on mm. their bell on their bellies. So you can actually see their organs and their heart beating and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, glass frogs that's kind of like what belly bolt seems to be going for like you can kind of see his inside electricity moving around in the trailer um yeah. but I, he's just so I, like everything else about him is just so under, he's, he's literally a pear he's a he actually he looks like an avocado he's even colored like one it looks like an inflatable halloween costume the <laughs> <laughs> the extra the extra eyes i didn't even realize it till you mentioned it, Chris. But like, why? Why would they do that? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at it again. And Ryan, we've been talking about the those being his actual eyes in the middle. But are we sure it's not supposed to just be a nose? And those are like weirdly placed nostrils above no, the mouth. I mean, that's uh, what on, I would think. On Bulbapedia, it says those are fake eyes. Okay. Madness. All is madness, and nothing makes sense. Welcome to the show, folks. Uh. Moving on to Pokemon Go news, uh, Elite Raids have been out by the time this show comes out for a little over a week. Um, I had the pleasure of doing a few of them. It's fine. We had, I think, seven people, and I did two raids. Caught both of the scary monster hoopas. Um, it, it's fine. It's an EX. It's a replacement for the EX gems. Um, which I wasn't like a huge fan of because it seemed like every time you got invited to one, it was like 1 p.m. on a work day on like Wednesday. And you're like, well, not going to get the Deoxys this time. But this seems a little better. I like the I like the 24 hour egg time because it allows you to coordinate with people and show up at the same time. I don't know if I'm crazy about the half hour that it's hatched. 
like give us a little more than like a half i think it's a half hour hmm. like two hours maybe an hour like yeah. help us out hmm. um other than that like there's nothing special about the raid at all you're getting a mythical pokemon but mythicals have been in legendary raids before like genesect like dark rye um hoopa is not a particularly difficult challenge like i went through three teams to beat him but with like seven people we still we still won and they and none of us were level 50 we were all between like 40 and like 47 or some 46 something around there um boy what else the 15 minute thing at the end where when you successfully defeat it for 15 minutes like you have a chance of like a rare spawn showing up i guess it was broken they didn't flip the switch nantic didn't flip the switch or something the rarest thing i saw was like a, a clink and and something else that wasn't rare at all like i didn't see anything um so hopefully they get that taken care of and give me a reason to stick around for 15 minutes and not feel like i'm wasting my time uh <laughs> i know you guys don't don't play go a lot um but what do you think of hoopa hoopa uh not my favorite pokemon I like Koopa, and it's normal, like, childish-looking form. I don't know what they call that form. Vision form, maybe? Uh, uh, cute form is what I call it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a Sonic character, and I like Sonic character designs fine. And then when it goes Super Saiyan or whatever the hell, that thing just looks cool. With uh, arms, like, separated from its body. Hoopa Unbound. I will give it... I, I agree with you. I also like Sonic designs uh, for the most part. I like cute Hoopa, and... I don't love Hoopa Unbound, but I do like how positively horrifying it is. It's almost Lovecraftian, and I do like that it's it's at least more interesting than like Landform Shaman and Skyform Shaman, which I don't hate that either, but it's certainly different. It's, it bucks the trends of mythicals as it, or, or you know forms form changing as it were. Yeah, um, that's fair. It certainly has like the most one of the most more drastic form shifts. Yeah, it and it's it might be the best form shift. Maybe I'm think I'm trying to think of one that could be better. Spectrier and Glacier, Glacier Ice Butt Horse, um, and Calyrex. I hate those with all burning passion. I hate their combination. It's just it's it's not a form. It's a Pokemon sitting on top of another Pokemon. It's not a yeah. form. They're not it's one a Pokemon. I mean, it's like a weird fusion thing. Like, I thought they were going to be going for fusion evolutions or something after that DLC. That was going to be their next weird one-off thing, but they mm. never did. Because, I mean, that's basically what it was. Like, you had seven Pokemon on your team, technically. Just two of them were riding each other. Did you, you know all I mean? see... Did you all see Avatar? Not the um, uh, the cool Avatar, but the meow meow blue alien people Avatar. Uh, mm -hmm. where they had like the the bra their braids had tentacles and then they would like insert them into their horse. That's yeah. kind of like how I envision Calyrex and like Spectre <laughs> and Ice Horse like connecting. Um, and it terrifying. just doesn't. It is terrifying, and I don't enjoy it. And it just drives me crazy because every time I ever see Calyrex sitting on one of them horses, I'm like, "You're not one Pokemon. Get out of that battle. You do not belong. Where are the judges?" <laughs> Who is allowing this? This bucks all conventional laws of Pokemon. The only people that do this is Team Rocket that throw out multiple Pokemon in one, one fight. So Calyrex is ergo a bad guy. Did you like rules lawyer the game when double battles were a thing? What do you mean there's four Pokemon on the this field? Is, what do you mean they cried for help and more appeared? What is this? <laughs> Madness. <laughs> Don't appreciate these rules bending at all. Um, um, but for the best transformation, I might say Zygarde, Zygarde, however the hell you're supposed to say that. Uh, you, where you collect all the pieces to form mm. the, well, yeah, you have snake version, collect all the little pieces, which aren't, don't count as Pokemon individually. They totally should, by the way. Um, if, what's that stupid wishy, if wishy-washy, if one wishy-washy counts as a Pokemon and the whole form <laughs> is of like a hundred of them is a form, then the one little tiny cute Zygarde snake should count as a Pokemon in addition Fair. to the big snake and in addition, addition to the big Voltron. I agree with you. I, I had forgotten about Zygarde. I, I would tend to agree. I think I like Zygarde a little better than Hoopa Unbound. And they've got that dog form. Yeah, yeah. they do. Yeah, they, that's good. A lot of coolness. 
not ever really did they ever really do anything with that in the main series games the dog form and the snake little little cutie squiggly forms they didn't really you just kind of caught the snake version of zygarde and that was kind of it yeah i should bring that had to like collect all the cells to start making the other forms and there's a lot of like little single zygarde cells that you'd have to collect to start brewing that up uh boy we we totally what the fuck did you send me <laughs> Physalamus, Physalamus, not a, not a re, re, mm-hmm. re, re. So that is the real life frog that Belly Bolt is uh, inspired by. It has fake eyes on its ass. It's, it certainly does. Its common name <laughs> is the Kuyu, Kuyaba dwarf frog. C U Y A B A dwarf frog. If you want to Google that, dear listener, be my guest. But we need to take a quick break and play a totally pre-recorded ad that is in no way improvised. Uh, So uh, we will see you on the other end of that break. Oh, Gracie's favorite music is back. And to, to, to announce that After Dark Cry is brought to you today by Ed She Ran. Ed, what are you doing here? Oh, hi, it's me, Ed She Ran. And I'm here to promote my latest product. It's called Howitzer on the Barbie. It is in no way offensive or reductive to my people. We take a Clawitzer, crack its claw, put it right there on the Barbie. You got yourself a nice, delicious treat. Ryan, Chris, we sent you both each a Clawitzer claw full of delicious succulent meat and a delicious dirty lemon to spritz upon it. It's one that fell in my very garage as I was loading it into the car. What did you guys think of that delicious meal? 10 out of 10. Klotzer on the Barbie is the best prawns this side of the Pacific. Um, I, th- I think there was a mistake with one of your underlings because I got a Klotzer and like a Barbie doll. Um, I didn't know how to prepare that correctly. That was intentional. That's because you'll you'll be so full that you'll just feel like you'll want to cuddle. And uh, you could take that Barbie doll and just cuddle her up. And, and not sponsored, by the way. That was just a personal <laughs> gift that I sent to you, Chris. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks a lot, Ed. You're welcome, Brett. And I'll be seeing you next time we have a song. Crikey. Uh, yeah, where are you from again? Nobody knows. And we are back from our break. Uh, I'm sure that was a totally fantastic product for whatever it was that we happened to play in that spot uh, and not improvised at all. Uh, This is the portion of the show, though, where our lovely, lovely patrons, whom we love and are in love with and we're going to marry, select for us a random Pokemon. Basically what happens is part of your uh, stuff that you get when you join the Patreon is, is... in addition to early access and blah, 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 new episodes before anybody else sees them, Discord benefits. Blah, blah, blah. One of them is voting on the Pokemon that we do. So it's not quite random anymore. I put six up, six random ones up, and they are voted on by our lovely community. And we're going to do that right now. So you're going to marry your patrons, Brett? Oh, Absolutely. Your mother? Well, no, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> the the other three. <laughs> uh, that Pokemon is going to be number eight hundred and forty-two. It's Appleton. Appleton is the Apple Nectar Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Guys, thoughts about Appleton, real quick, before we continue. Now I'm hungry. I know. <laughs> this is the start. The Hungry Man podcast. uh let's begin with applin shall we Mm. we shall of course 
Appolin is the Apple Core Pokemon and is a Grass Dragon Pokemon. I want you to imagine an apple, red apple, not a, one of those green, delicious green sour apples, not one of those whack white apple, white apples. I meant yellow. I know colors. Of course I know colors. I'm not an alien. You're an alien. Um, imagine a nice, delicious red apple. Then imagine a terrifying set of eyes squirting out the top of it. Uh, that's what an Applin looks like. Um, Applin, are there? Are they the first grass dragons? I think they are, aren't they? I think they are the yeah. first and only. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty dope. They uh, they debuted in, of course, Galar and Sword and Shield. I knew that. And it spends its entire life inside an apple. It hides from its natural enemies, bird Pokemon, by pretending it's just an apple and nothing more, which would one would think would cause it to be in the line of fire for things that like to eat apples. Like Greedunce, for instance. As soon as it's born, or any Pokemon, because they all eat berries, uh, it burrows into an apple. As soon as it's born, it burrows into an apple. Not only does the apple serve as its food source, but the flavor of the fruit determines its evolution. course fantastic shiny it's a green apple i mean pretty mm. on the nose maybe the best green shiny if you think about it i don't like at least they didn't like screw it up and make it blue or brown which although brown would be kind would kind of be kind of funny as a rotten apple yeah uh um, is the is the bottom like peeled to look like batman's head or is that just me going crazy? Because it's definitely got that whole like two peaks thing going on. It definitely looks like a batarang kind of. Yeah, I could see that. I can see it. I think it's just supposed to be like the bottom of a dragon's jaw or something. So you're but saying, I see Batman. You're but saying I should go ahead. I'm sorry. Isn't Applin the green worm inside the apple? And this is just an apple he found. So you just that is true. To find... The lore is very confusing. That is true. <laughs> yeah. Uh uh, so you're saying I should read the rest of the trivia as Batman? Yes. Yes. Yes, you should. <clears throat> um, swear, swear to me. Swear, swear to me. Nope, that's not it. Hang on a second. I gotta fight it. <clears throat> <laughs> Let me take a drink. <clears throat> Alfred. 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 Applin. I need your phone phones. Nope, I can't do it. Can you guys do a better one? <laughs> um... Right, you go. Swear. Where are we? I can't. I, I don't have the scratch. I don't have I don't have the rasp anymore. I can't do it. Nope. It's not there. <laughs> Applin and its evolved forms are the only Pokemon that are in the grass and dragon egg groups. Require only 600,000 experience points to reach level 100, the lowest among generation 8 Pokemon. Applin has the lowest base speed stat of all dragon type. Uh, that's um, for you. Real, real quick, because I did, I looked it up. Um, it might be the only one with a grass dragon egg group, but technically Mega Sceptile gets dragon type. Mm. And then I always forget Alolan Exeggutor is dragon and grass. Oh, oh you're, that's right. Even yeah. though it has no business being dragon whatsoever. No. <laughs> yeah, it's the strangest typing. Uh, yeah, you, thank you so much for the correction, Chris. I'm uh, you saved me a, an angry tweet from like, um, you know, Rahaze or something later. <laughs> uh, Flapple, it will go, we'll go do that one next. There's the Apple Wing Pokemon, one of Applin's final forms. It has a Gigantamax form, which let's be real, it's a candy apple looking thing. Like, I, I don't know what to make. It's supposed to look like a candy apple, but I don't know what to make of it. It's scary and weird at the same time. It's a design. It it is it does technically qualify as a design. Uh, so Flapple <laughs> is like the little dragon has hatched from its apple. However, mm -hmm. it's like hanging on using its little gecko hands to hang on to like two pieces of the apple to kind of form wings. It's wearing a piece of it as like a helmet. And the bottom of it is like its tail is holding on to it. And it's just a weird guy. Like, I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. Um, it ate a sour apple, and that induced its evolution. In its cheeks, it stores an acid capable of causing chemical burns. It flies on wings of apple skin and spits a powerful acid. It can also change its shape into that of an apple. 
to the shock of no one. <laughs> under the under the influence of Gigantamax energy, it produces more sweet nectar and cha- changes change to resemble a giant apple. Martha! Martha! <laughs> if it stretches its neck, the strong aroma of its nectar pours out. The scent is so sickeningly sweet that the whiff, one whiff, will make another Pokemon faint. I can't believe they found a way to make uh, diabetes an aerosol disease. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Also, good shiny, it's green. Flapple's the lightest Pokemon to learn Heavy Slam. Mm. Flapple and Appleton are the only Pokemon to have physically identical Gigantamax forms, although they are still treated as different Pokemon as they have distinct Pokedex entries, G-Max moves, and cries. This is also the only instance of two different species of Pokemon that can be physically identical without the use of transform, imposter, or illusion. Legit, some neat trivia there. Hmm. Uh, and then previously, we've mentioned that they're in the grass and dragon egg group, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Nextly, nextly, that's a word. It's a word now. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, Appleton evolves from Applin when exposed to a sweet apple. It is one of the final forms. It's again, Gigantamax form is the same. Now, Appleton is a gem of a Pokemon. It basically looks like a imagine some kind of weird dragon dog, but its back is completely swelled up and about to burst, but it looks like an apple pie. And children love to peel the strips of apple pie off and eat it while it's alive. And it has a little apple helmet, although it kind of looks like a cherry to me. Yeah, I can see the cherry mix up there. How I think this is the I I think Flapple's a little bit more bad. The eye in particular, Mm -hmm. uh, like head and then coming over the apple flap the way it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a fan. I agree. Yes. (laughs) I, I I was trying not to interrupt you. In the middle of your thought, but I was going to have you uh, go to Appleton Mm. on Bulbapedia and scroll down to see an image of its eyeball out. Uh, And it does the same thing with its little cherry apple helmet. The eye is like popped out over the helmet. And I do not like it. Yeah, I don't like that either. Keep your eyes underneath your helmet, Appleton. I like I like everything else. Like seeing it like stand up there. It looks great, except for the one creeper eye that is showing yeah don't like that eating a sweep at sweep eating a sweep eating a eating a sweet apple caused its evolution look guys talking is hard (laughs) and when you talk as much as someone like me or us do in this business like you're bound to get a few things wrong and if you want to hold that against me tweet to me at never mind a nectar nectar (laughs) A nectaris, and that's not a word, a <laughs> nectaris scent wafts from its body, luring in the bug Pokemon it preys upon. Its body is covered in sweet nectar, and the skin on its back is especially yummy. Children used to have it as a snack. So, can you imagine having skin so sweet that the neighborhood children would just chase you down to peel your skin off and eat it? Mm. I, they used to, though, right? So, you know, whatever the... Pokemon well, now, equivalent of PETA is like crack down on those kids. Right. Now we <laughs> now they slaughter their Appletons first. <laughs> yeah. Humane. Yeah. It's kind of like um like going up to a pig and then just being like just yanking the bacon just clear off of its back. Just, just cut off a nice butt cheek. Walking up to a cow and just yanking the jerky right clear out of its booty. Uh, it blasts its opponent with massive amounts of sweet sticky nectar. Same. Hard same. I always do that. Drowning them under the deluge. Yeah. Ask my partner. Due to, gig- <laughs> due to Gigantamax energy, this Pokemon's nectar has thickened. Hey, you know, <laughs> if the condom fits, the increased viscosity lets the nectar absorb more damage than before. Yeah. I mean, I'm here to tell you from experience. Truth. Truth to wisdom, my friend. Can take a lot of nut shots and not feel it. it just hey. absorbs that damage. Moving on, Appleton and Flapple. <laughs> oh, no, I, we already said that one. Uh, there's nothing new. We've already basically said everything when we, when we yeah. read uh, Flapple. Uh, final thoughts about Appleton or good, can we get any Apple jokes in? And Appleton away keeps the professor away. Thoughts? Is that a, is that a mid-tier joke? 
Uh, yeah, probably somewhere in the middle. Bye bye, Miss Appleton Pie. Drove the Chevy to the levee, but the levee was wet as hell. Good old boys were peeling skin off its back, singing, <laughs> This will be the day that I kill this fucking thing. Um, what other, at- let's see. Um, uh, hey, Brett. My favorite movie is Appleton, American Appleton, where that guy sticks his dick and never mind. Never Into mind. An Appleton. Never mind. Jason uh, lets his nectar out. <laughs> yeah. Jason, uh, it's not Sudeikis. It's not Bateman. Who was it? Not important. No one can remember. Uh, I apologize hey, to you if you're listening. Hey, me. Who led all the Appletons to the bakery? Uh, is it the Muffin Man? The Pie Piper. Oh, very good. Uh, do you know the Muffin Man, though? Uh, does he live on uh, Drury Lane? That, uh, that guy? Yeah, the Muffin Man. Yeah, yeah, I rekeyed yeah. his house last week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Chris, oh, sorry. thoughts? I was, yeah, um, so I'm glad that you read that entry that said that literally Gigantamax, Flapple, and Appleton are the same Pokemon. Mm-hmm. They just are... Um, I guess they have different different entries because me and Ryan had this conversation when the second one came up for Gigantamax because we have them both on our list. And I said, if we're going to even bother putting them both on the list, they should be right next to each other. They're not right next to each other. <laughs> guess how many spots separated they oh, are. Oh, this is delicious. I'm going to say 53. Um, nearly 100 spots. They are how? 92 spots separated. <laughs> which one's higher than the other? Which one is which? Uh, Flapple is at 870 and Appleton is at 962. Crazy. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned it earlier or not, but on Gotta Rank Them All, uh, which is a fantastic podcast that me and Gracie were recently on, uh, you guys take 10 Pokemon and rank them in a master list. I don't know if mm-hmm. I mentioned that earlier or not. It's kind of late in the show to be getting to that point, but that's <laughs> cr- a crazy fact that even though they're different Pokemon, but they look identical that they made it that far apart. I don't know what happened, man. <laughs> I don't know what happened either. I, I, uh, it, so much it, of that shows a blur. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've done this a thousand times. Cut me some slack. <laughs> uh, speaking of getting into someone's slack, I need to share my screen with you guys. <laughs> You're into your slacks? I mean, getting into your slacks, but more specifically, getting into these guys' slacks. Yeah. We're going to play. This is a little segment we did last time you guys were on the show Mm -hmm. uh, where we ranked Pokemon items from the games uh, to horrendously offensive uh, results. I thought that we could rank the Pokemon professors from the main games. Since last time me and Grace were on your show, we talked a fair amount about professors, or at least the ones from Scarlet and Violet. Yeah. So we have here a list of Pokemon professors from the main series games. I do want to include a couple of stragglers from some more notable side games, but we'll cross that, that terrifying bridge when we get to it. Guys, <laughs> let's just go ahead and, and, and look at this list here. Now we're starting from scratch. Who is who? We gonna, we got to put someone at the bottom. Who's who's going to bring up the rear for us here? Um, is our, do you have specific criteria in mind? Oh, um, my criteria is the same as what I bring to your show. It's totally bullshit and made up. <laughs> True. Fair. Okay, so the normal criteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, mm. I I want to say Laventon from. I love it. From Legends Arceus, I, I I love his game, uh, but he he's like, man, he's the one probably doing the most that feels like an actual professor because he's like out there researching and trying to figure out these new mm-hmm. new Pokemon that you know it's this brand new phenomenon. But uh, at the same time, he does not like the jobs of all the other professors. He has no clue. He doesn't give you a Pokemon. Like, well, he has you catch, but he doesn't give you a Pokemon, right? Or am I crazy, Chris? He doesn't give you one, no, because he doesn't know yeah. how to... You're, you're a god for being able to catch Pokemon even in that game. Yeah. So this is the one that I know the... I mean, obviously, we don't know anything about much about Seda or Turo, but um, I didn't play Arceus, Arceus, excuse me, Arceus, whatever. I didn't play that one, so this is the guy I know the least, the, least about. Um, so I 
kneel to your judgment. If if poor old Professor Laventon of ancient Sino times deserves to be on, on the bottom of our list and get the boots of destiny rammed into his face for his hard work, then so be it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. He's also just look at how dumb he looks. He, <laughs> he looks very very dumb. I don't know what he's doing with this hair there. I would like to propose to you all just above Laventon at the next slot up. We add Professor Magnolia because she basically spends the entirety of the game being barely like you barely interact with her, only for her to be fucking replaced. Yep. Um, do you remember anything notable about Magnolia? No, you don't. And if you do, interrupt me, please. No, I mean, it's all Sonia in that game. Like, I mean, she shows up like once at the beginning, right? You meet her and she doesn't mm-hmm. even like help you in any way because Sonia is also there. She's just, yeah, she is like a tenured professor who's teaching assistant does everything for them already. Yeah, mm-hmm. we do get this. The, the few times we do see her, she's usually delegating to her assistant who, spoiler alert for Sword and Shield, it turns out to be like a s- secret bad guy for the bad guys. Um, you know, the guys with the crazy fucking hair and betraying you. And then you get to interact. You get to see her a little bit when she passes the torch to Sonya. And so I I mean, I if she's not last, she should be above Leventon. Yeah. No, I agree. Magnolia would have been my my other choice for the very bottom. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm okay with. I mean, she barely exists in the game. She's fine to be above Leventon. Chris, um, why don't you pick somebody and 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 put them somewhere on the list? You don't necessarily have to. They didn't necessarily have to be directly above Magnolia, but pitch, just pitch us something here. Hmm, um, I will go directly above Magnolia, and I'll say the first one that drew my eye is Sycamore because I barely remember him at all like what does he do in that game Fair. Do you your pokemon that's it i don't know yeah uh spe- he like even for a little while he teams up with the bad guy like he's like uh, uh with team flair like he's friends with the leader of team flair and then at the very end he's like ah i thought we could save him <laughs> like bro <laughs> x and y is the main series game that brought me back to pokemon after i you know i mean it, we've all had that like space of time where we missed a few games and something mm-hmm. brought us back for me it was a beautiful deer pokemon on the cover uh and i played x and y and loved it and i still can't tell you what sycamore does in that game because i don't remember so i told I'm, I'm with you guys 100 percent uh ryan what about you what do you got what do you got next up here oh I think man i have my i have a suspicion is, is this gonna get harder the, the further we go <laughs> yeah i think this is where we okay i might not go directly next i might i might go a little bit somewhere else on the list okay let's let's talk big let's talk maybe top professor okay all right i i already know who my top professor is like i've been eyeballing that person this whole time and god the... help you if you don't say the correct answer <laughs> is that the professor you want on top of you or a uh, correct uh well i know that answer Uh, i don't know that that's my answer (laughs) what you got ryan um i'm thinking i want to rank professor oak i i think oak could go to the top he's been in the most games far and away it's got the largest impact to the series he's he's been there from the start it's been you know i mean just getting it in ash's mom for 20 something years (laughs) i was literally gonna (laughs) yeah 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 (laughs) uh the the mac the dad the the pokemon daddy himself like he ash in the anime sends all of his pokemon and he's taking care of like a thousand tauros he could do it all um i don't disagree that he should be very high up the list Mm. and in and in a unsubjective list that is just purely based on scientific fact oak is probably if not top one, top two. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, I'm also not sure that he's all the way at the top, but definitely probably number two. Okay. What what, what are you thinking? Who who would you put at the top? Who would I put at the top? Yeah. That's hard. I think, honestly, just for the fact that she's actually, like, kind of a main character throughout the game, I like Professor Sonya, and I like Sword and Shield a lot. 
Oh, Ryan, that is a deal <laughs> to get overruled. <laughs> oh, daddy, it feels good. Chris, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say me and you, our are, 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 are processes are aligned. And yeah, I was totally going to say it's because she spends the whole game with you, right? And helps you out throughout the entire story. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> that was going to totally be my argument. Yeah, um, likely story. Sure, uh, exactly. But I, I'll just add on to that a little bit. Like, this is the first time we see... I think Sword and Shield is the first time that I've really paid attention and noticed any, like, real development, right? Like, usually your rival becomes champion only for you to beat them, like, two seconds later. Um, and then that's it, right? You complete the National Dex, and, and the professor's like, good job, and, like, that's it. This one... Sonia goes from one of your friends along your journey to becoming a professor. Your rival's like, you know what? I'm not very good at this. And he's like, I'm going to go do something else instead. Um, I don't remember. Does Mar Marnie do anything? I don't think so. I would say Gen 5 ends oh, yeah, she evolution. Does. She takes over as the gym leader. Uh, what, what's that? I'm sorry, Ryan. Ends like personal character growth uh, in Gen 5 is probably like the first sticking point in my mind mm -hmm. uh, of Pokemon trying to do something more than the typical story they'd had going for a very long time. But as far as professors go, I think, yeah. I don't think we see that in that game. So I think me and Chris are going to have to overrule you and throw Sonya on top of Oak. Although I will say, uh, please put me over Oak so <laughs> yeah. that I can uh -huh. be underneath. So, yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You want to be I on mean, top of Oak? I understand. <laughs> yeah, sure. Fine. Why not? Um, I don't hate that. Okay. Uh, I want to throw one out here. Uh, this is honestly, this is a good, great sign for Sada and Turo that they're not at the bottom. They're the ones we know the least about. They're not at the bottom. Right. So ju we're just basically going off of solely on their designs uh, mm -hmm. to that. end, I want to put Turo. I don't think he's going to stay here. But I want to put him in between Professor Oak and Sycamore. Like, I think they're, we're probably going to end up with these guys probably in the middle for now. But I like, I do want to mention that I like him better than Seda or Sada. What do you guys think? I think that's okay. Yeah, I like that design better than Seda. Seda's got like a, like a cave woman thing going on. Yeah. Which if like, you're into that, good for you. I'm into I'm it. Not. I'm Team Seda. Let's go. You want some snoo snoo there, buddy? Mm hmm. Death by snoo snoo. Let it come. There's no <laughs> there's no better way to die if you want to be real. <laughs> I but, can't, uh, certainly can't think of one. But if I'm being outvoted, that's fine. Well, we'll put Seda directly under Turo for now. Uh, Ryan, you're kind of up here. We're, we're running out of options. Um, well, I've got a... If, if anyone is going to bring up Professor Elm for Gen 2, I'm going to do it. Uh, he's at least better than Sycamore. <laughs> Okay, that's true. Uh, you know, introduces breeding. <laughs> I uh, bet he does. <laughs> <laughs> Look at breeding, him. maybe. <laughs> he's just like uh, my problem with Elm is that he's just like a uh, chasing Oak's shadow. Like he's yeah. clearly like, oh, I love Professor Oak. Professor Oak's the smartest, and I just want to be Professor Oak. It's like okay. Now that's your personality is that you like somebody else. This is not shots across the bow, but. Oak is clearly like the Albert Einstein of Pokemon and Elm is clearly like the Bill Nye, the science guy. Um, <laughs> they're both great. They're both fantastic. But one is more of an entertainer educator. And the other one was like the smartest man who ever lived. I don't know. I'd say Oak is more like Bill Nye. He's the one with the radio show. Okay. Elm's the one. How long has Professor Oak been staring at Pokemon and never saw one of them plop an egg out? And Elm's like, oh, my God. So Bill Nye and Elm is Stephen Hawking. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see it. Sure. So we're putting, <laughs> you wanted Elm above Sycamore, correct? At least above Sycamore. I don't know okay. how much higher he's going to go. Well, um, as of right now, the only people that are above him are Seda and Turo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chris, you got, got one for us? Um, yeah, man, we're running out. Professor Kakui, let's talk about the shirtless man. Uh, number three, right behind Professor Oak. Yeah, personally. I like personally him. for he's, me. He's fun. Yeah, I he's think, got great personality. I think he. I think he's 
arguably the most fun professor. I think Sonya's really fun too, but she's, you know, you can make the argument that she's not a professor during most of that game. Kakui starts as a professor and he's just fun throughout the whole thing, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Absolutely. At least for as far as I've played, I didn't beat it. I mean, he's already ready for the club. He doesn't have a shirt on. <laughs> also, just a you know, I, I like it. He's not exactly a, a, a departure for like design wise. Like they they typically stick around like the old white male uh, thing like, you know, Juniper, obviously, which we haven't gotten to yet, is like the first woman that they introduced. Mm. But and I guess Birch is not an old guy either. And neither is Sycamore. But Kakui just has like he just got style to him. Yeah. I'm probably just rambling at this point. Kakui, Kakui, fun name to say. Um, let's see here. Well, I just I already mentioned her. Where are we where are we putting Juniper at? And let me throw out. Um, mm, mm, I'm willing to put her underneath Turo. She's definitely above like Elm for me. I think I'd put her. Maybe it's just me being Team Seda, but I'd go below Seda as well. I could stay above Elm, though. You okay. put her below Seda? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Juniper has soccer mom energy, and Seda has, let's, uh, you know, hey, make some kids some- make me a soccer mom energy. Sometimes, sometimes soccer moms do it better and don't check my internet history after I'm dead. I <laughs> say that much. Uh, $20, I'll come clear it for you. There are a reason. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason why they're. There's a reason why they're moms. Because they fuck. <laughs> Chris, we're running out. We're running low here. Yeah, all we got left is two. Um, two, um, and then there's a couple more that I want to. Okay. There's, there's like two more I want to put in here that aren't currently being shown on the screen. Um, I, I'll I'll bring up Birch representing us, uh, thick gentlemen. Mm-hmm. I will. I would like him below Kakui. No argument for me, Ryan. No, I'm okay with it. Um, uh, does does Birch have a uh, hmm? What do you think of May? <laughs> Put it that way. What is uh, his what? child? Oh, is that his child? Right. Yeah. May May is his child in the anime. I actually didn't know that. At least in the game. Oh, in the game right. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, okay. I didn't watch the. Yeah, the I, I had forgot. I must have forgotten that. Hmm. Weird. Uh, it's a little bit of a silver spoon in May's mouth, huh? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Who's left? I think we only have one left, right? Is that yeah. Rowan? Rowan. Rowan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rowan. What do we think? Under Juniper or above Juniper? I'd go below. <laughs> I'd go below, below. Yeah. Yeah. Above Elm. I think I'd go below Elm, but oh, okay. maybe I'm Gen I'm, 2 biased. I'm, I mean, I'm cool with it. All right. Yeah, it doesn't really bother me. Brown's just a grumpy old guy. Yeah, yeah, he's just too grumpy when you first meet him. I love I love how we how we say that, and then he's still somehow above Sycamore. Well, you know what? <laughs> At least he didn't side with the enemy. Sycamore's out here. Fair. Uh, there are a ton of other professors in like side games that we're really not Goodness going Christ. to, yeah, that we're really not going to get into because uh, you know we can't do this all day. Who are we? Uh, but we there are. I did say that I want wanted to put two in here, uh, and as soon as I find them, I'll tell you. So uh, you want us to vamp? Is that what you're asking? You got it. See, you guys are professionals. I love What's you guys. Man? I don't know how much vamping I can do. You've had me on here for like God, like an hour now. Right. So the, the list that we have. Okay, um, shut up. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Um, <laughs> first up, we have Professor Willow. Pokemon Go. Mm. See him all the time. You, you're used to clicking through his dialogue as fast as humanly possible. Uh, he recently got a cool leather jacket as part of Fashion Week upon his return from the ultra wormhole that sucked him up. Um, he he gives you a little bit every single time there's a special quest, and there's been a lot of special quests. So I think 
I, I like Professor Willow. I don't dislike Professor Willow. I don't think his design stands out. The leather jacket helps, though. Uh, it gives him like an Indiana Jones type of flair. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to put him underneath Seda for now, which probably isn't fair to him since we don't know anything about Turo and Seda, but I, I that feels about right for me. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. He's uh, uh he's clearly very athletic. Like he's wearing like gym shorts and like a runner yeah. stop, it looks like, but then also a lap coat. My microphone, I keep yanking my microphone out with my leg because I'm a professional. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say like he he's he's an older gentleman. He's probably in his. He's probably just hit forty uh, or forty two because you know his hair is turning white or gray. And um, but he still goes to the gym. Like he still fuck you up, fuck me up because I, I ain't going. I ain't been in the gym in ages. Look at me. I'm a big sack of birch over here. Um, you guys good with under under uh, the, the, what did I say? Seda. Yeah, above okay. Juniper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, lastly, I want to put in just because I want to talk shit about him, Professor Mirror of the Lentil Region in New Pokemon Snap. Professor Mirror, yeah. and I just wanna, I just wanna just pre say where I think he should go. Is directly to the bottom underneath Leventon. For crimes against underage minors, he should be arrested and thrown in prison forever. What did he do to underage minors? Abducted them and took them to the island? Uh, he has an assistant that's probably all of 12, and I do not appreciate the way he talks to her. It's a bit too creepazoid, and it really threw me off in that game. Okay. Um, and I hate him. It is so distract. And Ryan, you will understand this reference. I don't know if you have watched any Game Informer or Minmax stuff, but he looks exactly like Kyle Hilliard from Minmax. Yeah. And it's very Oh, no. Poor Kyle. He does so, look a lot. I'm like so Kyle. sorry, Kyle. I, I too, am familiar with that, that organization. And you're right. It so totally does. <laughs> I Amazing. haven't played a uh, new snap. I, I went Holy to shit. look up Professor Mirror and the second link uh, from thegamer.com, Professor Mirror is more of a monster than anyone in Resident Evil Village. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now I'm curious. This is Rita. This is the assistant for Mirror. Whom okay. he, whose father he's good friends with. I don't like it. The thing stinks to high heaven. You know what? I'm just, you know what? I'm, I'm pulling an executive move. This is my fucking show. And Grace is not here to stop me. I'm just removing him from the list altogether. He doesn't get to exist. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, I mean, also his, the way he ranks your photos is bullshit. Not as bullshit as Professor Oak in the original book. Oh, you know that was completely random, but it's fucking, still bullshit. Fucking right. Fucking right. Amen. Uh, and that's going to do it for our list. So real quick, let me just run it down real quick. We, we're going to begin with number 13, Professor Leventon. Number 12, Magnolia. 11, Sycamore. 10, Rowan. 9, Elm. 8, Juniper. 7, Willow. Seda. Number 6 is Seda. Number 5 is Turo. Number 4 is Birch. Number 3 is Kakui. Number 2 is Professor Oak. And number 1, Professor Sonia. And number 1 in my heart, Professor Rahe's friend of the show. Because we're all uh, really thirsty. <laughs> especially, yeah, yeah. 100%. Uh, don't tell my girlfriend. And folks, that is going to do it for us. This has been After Dark Rye. Ryan, Chris, the floor is yours to tell the people about everything you're up to, what you're doing, your first pet's name, the make and model of your car, mm -hmm. uh, uh, your, the last four of your social, your okay. mother's maiden name, mm -hmm. and uh, your phone number your grandfather's um allegiance during world war ii which which uh mother or father or grandfather uh it's usually maternal okay and then uh for paternal uh you just want your father's middle name okay. and his full social security number and uh, the previous 10 years worth of home physical addresses you're up first right <sighs> All right, so uh, I drive a 2032. No, uh, <laughs> 2032. It's from the future, Look, man. I'm up. On, I'm on the. I'm a car guy. I'm on the up and up in the automotive world. Um, no, 
It's like that uh, when you were a kid, that one guy's like, yeah, I got that game that's not out yet. My uncle works for them, so I already got <laughs> beat it. We all knew that kid. My uncle works for GM. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I got Mortal Kombat 6 for the Genesis. <laughs> uh, no, uh, well, we've mentioned it a few times. Come in, check out our show, Gotta Rank Them All. It's uh, the uh, most officially arbitrary show about Pokemon on the internet. We're putting all of the Pokemon into a huge list. We've had guests all, all along the way. Brett has come on a couple times. We've had Gracie once, a whole bunch of other people. It's a great time. You can find us at Friendly Fire Games. Uh, we'll be relaunching very soon we're going to be doing a uh, plague tale requiem uh Woo! game club uh very excited for that i have yet to start it i've been pushing it just a little bit to uh not play too er- too much too early and then have to sit and wait for uh recording day yeah. to keep playing um more stuff to come for sure check out our twitch twitch.tv slash friendly fire pod right yep yeah uh anything else chris yeah, no, uh, we stream reactions to everything that we are available for. We streamed the Silent Hill thing that was yesterday as a recording, the Cap- the Capcom Resident Evil showcase that was today as a recording. Um, and yeah, mostly what we're streaming on there right now is D&D, although Tom and Tyler, our other co-hosts on Friendly Fire Games, should be starting up their Wasted series for Gotham Knights soon. Yeah, That's awesome. Uh, yeah, check them out there. Links will be in the description of this episode as well, if you so care. Um, for me, uh, the original, my first show that I ever did in called Let's Die, uh, the His Versus Hers Guide to the Apocalypse, the podcast, it's back, baby. Uh, if you check that feed, we had an episode come out on Friday, episode zero, um, we introduce our new co-host or new host, uh, Cody, Dr. Cody Mathis. You might remember her from her appearance on this show, as well as uh, numerous appearances on It's Super Effective. Uh, she's going to my permanent host with that show now. And we are coming back in full force for 2023. January 2023 is what we're shooting for. Uh, so check that out. If you don't know what it is, it is a comedy nerd podcast where we talk about impossible things and how to survive them. And we play a version of like D and D light sort of thing. So if you want to hear us, uh, talk about that as well as a live reaction to the Mario movie trailer. And we, you know, Cody gets sucked down a green tube and do, 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 do. She has to survive. Bowser's Dungeon, check out Let's Die, the His Versus Hers Guide to the Apocalypse podcast. Link's in the description. And that's going to do it for us. Um, But, you know, after you rank all the professors... uh, uh, Help me. Help me. Help me. Uh, uh, Dark dark cry. Dark cry yourself to sleep. With some green peppers. Bye, everybody. Oh, man. What a show. This is the part where um, if people listen real carefully, they get to hear a little little bonus tidbit at the end. It, so It should have been Dark Cry Yourself to Sleep because Sonya's not in bed with you. Damn. Uh, yeah, it could have been. Chris, what do you think it should have been? Um, Dark Cry Yourself to Sleep because Brett's not in bed with you. Fair. Fair. <laughs> um, there's only a few ladies that I've had the pleasure of making cry in bed. I'll tell you that much. (laughs) (laughs) You might be wondering, uh, why the headband? Uh, That's so bad guys can't see me peel and eat oranges. Um, (laughs) No, my hair has been bothering me. I cut about six inches of it off. This is the life update no one one wants or needs. And uh, most of the color is gone. Well, it's all, oh, I see it. Why is your head purple? Our uh, our charity stream was this past weekend. Oh, and, right. Yeah, my beard's red. It's hard to tell with my light. Oh, yeah. I see it now, now that you turn to the side. Um, shoot. I cut off like six inches. Um, and it's at a point where like 
the tip of my hair is like right here mm. you see right in like eyeball length driving me fucking crazy at least when it's longer than that like it doesn't bother me yeah, anyway as much. It like yeah. it rolls around instead of poking but yeah the, the price we pay for being beautiful right ryan <sighs> it's, it's it ain't easy it, man. it's a curse it's truly a curse um someday we'll be as good looking as chris though i'll tell you that much. yeah someday your hairline will recede as much as mine yeah you should be so lucky <sighs> I, I, I can only wish you see me biting my lower lip. Mm. <laughs> Some days I wish I didn't have hair to worry about. <laughs> well, I got good news for you, Ryan. Someday, <laughs> somehow, we're going to shave Ryan's head, but not right now. I know you're wondering when next year's charity stream it is. <laughs>